there we are and uh, we'll just uh, move back over to this class now and um, it's important to note that a lot of these classes actually um, they use some of Unity's built-in things. They, they, they have to to be able to work. So uh, a lot of the init uh, initialization that I've done with these classes are done on awake. Um, so it's important to note that uh, when you're dealing with these classes, you don't want to override that. Otherwise, it's going to break things. So what I did is actually I implemented a, a function that's called from inside of awake that you can uh, access by saying uh, override um, protected because it's only visible within uh, uh, classes that inherit from it and it's a void and it's called init so by overriding this function oops, I might have indented uh, one too far there yeah I did there we go uh, so this function is called from inside of awake to maintain that execution order I didn't want to take that away from you even though I had to use awake for something so just use init instead of awake and it's gonna get called it um, the same time, give or take, uh, however, you know, milliseconds or whatever it, it takes to, to call the, the functions that are that are nested from uh, awake inside of Screen 2D. Um, same goes from uh, Screen 2D Manager uh, as well. So um, in here, uh, we want to get the button now to talk to the screen that it's uh, that it's contained in. So uh, if you're familiar with Flash, uh, I implemented. Um, an event system that's uh, pretty much identical to the way that, that that's laid out and I, I, I did this uh, a while ago and then I decided you know this would be something that's kinda smart and uh, really easy to use and really fast to get working uh, to work inside of the framework so I integrated it in um, so from here uh, we'll just uh, reference uh, play button and we'll just say uh, we want to add an event listener add event listener and uh, this is going to uh, take two parameters. One is an event, and uh, play button um, dispatches a UI event. Um, if to read up on these classes, just check the the, the script reference. Uh, so it's a UI event, um, and it takes a dot press is the one. So when we press the button, um, it's going to dispatch this event. And then we also need to call a function. So I'm just going to type on play here and that'll be the delegate function that's called so now we just need to say uh, public void on play and uh, these delegates uh, the event handler delegates uh, take an ev take the the base event class um, and that class is uh, eq eq event and we're just gonna call it e and the reason why I call it eq eq event is because uh, I couldn't call it event because unity doesn't uh, support namespaces so uh, unity already has a class called event so I just decided to throw the EQ EQ uh, in front of it to uh, differentiate. So uh, on play, we'll just uh, call a, uh, a print. So it prints to our console, and we'll just say uh, play was pressed. And uh, we'll save that. We'll switch back to the editor and let it compile. Um, and there's no errors, so that's good. And we'll just switch back to the game view here, and um, we'll hit play. So uh, just like before, we have our mouse uh, events, and if we press it, what do you know? The function was called um, play pressed right there in the console. So very easy to get things talking to each other. Um, oops go back here we are um, yeah so uh, very easy to get things talking to each other so let's just grab the, uh, the Unisite window here again and I'll uh, show you how to remove the event listener it's a uh, pretty much the same thing as adding it you just say play button and uh, I'll just copy from event listener so I don't have to type it again um, remove and then paste event listener on play. So now um, it should do the same thing. And we'll just hit play here and uh, hit play. And we're pressing it a bunch of times, but it only calls the function once. Whereas um, 
if I just comment that out and we don't remove the event listener. We can press it a bunch of times and uh, it'll continuously fire that event. Um, so it's really, really simple to get things talking to each other that way. Um, so I guess the next thing that I really want to uh, show is uh, the uh, the cross-platform uh, compatibility that it, that it has here um, with, uh, with the, uh, the platform dependent compilation. Uh, if you notice here, uh, since I'm working in PC Mac uh, standalone, um, there's there's a there's a countless amount of uh, screen sizes that you can have. You know, you can specify, especially even even in web, you can specify your screen sizes. Uh, it, it doesn't really matter. It's kind of up to your discretion. Um, but with like a, a device like uh, I/O an iOS device like your iPhone and your iPad or any of the Android phones or tablets uh, there's a fixed amount um, it's only what the device uh, supports so uh, depending on your platform and I'll just demonstrate that uh, by uh, calling up my build settings here and I'll just uh, switch to Android build settings really fast switch platform it'll do a quick compilation here and uh, If I click off now and move back, you'll see that the, the field is actually now replaced with a drop down that has all of the same um, screen resolutions as you have here in your uh, your game screen. So I was working in 483.20 before, I'll just keep that there. Uh, and we'll set that to be uh, HTC Legend Wide, which also uh, sets it there. And you'll notice that if I change it to like tall or whatever things things change so very easy to maintain um, your work environment there uh, the other cool thing is that all of the classes um, that are tied into the framework are also uh, platform uh, dependent in compilation so uh, you don't have to worry about any rollover states or anything like that inside of uh, a touch screen because obviously um, there's no mouse to, to dictate rolling over it's just um, you're pressing or you're not pressing so it's only two states so since I'm in Android right now I'll show you um, I can interact with the mouse so you don't have to have like a remote or anything which is kinda nice so uh, as I'm mousing over um, you'll see that nothing happens but if I press it switches to the press event so um, let's just switch back now to PC and Mac standalone and we'll just switch back to that and I'll hit play and you'll notice that I, ha I get my mouse overs back so that that that's gonna give you the ability to build uh, at least program you know everything once and, and build it once and then deploy it anywhere without having to generate quads for for each each platform So uh, that's pretty much everything that I wanted to go over uh, in, in this uh, basic introduction tutorial. Um, I'll be posting more um, over the next few days, but uh, that's pretty much what I wanted to show to kind of get started. Uh, from here, you can just you know read the scripting reference and, and kind of play around with it and get things to work. But uh, the next tutorial that I'm going to do is actually building a small uh, set of uh, of menus and then getting them all to work together and uh, incorporate transitions and stuff so um, stay tuned for that um, and thanks for watching and thanks for using quad UI um, I really uh, I really appreciate uh, all the support that I've gotten um, while I was working on on this uh, if I if I didn't get it I probably this probably would have became vaporware so uh, I'm really happy that I can release this to, to the community for for free and uh, hopefully it helps a lot of a lot of you guys out uh, with uh, creating uh, really nice menus um, that are uh, both easy to create in the editor and uh, look really good on low-end hardware like your uh, like your iOS and, and other mobile devices so thanks a lot and I'll catch you next time